My goal today for this video is by the time you're done watching, you understand how to get the quicks to receive. Hi guys, my name's Colleen. Welcome to Good Dog Grooming. You've probably seen a lot of diagrams like this one, like this one. I'm gonna try to clarify a couple of methods that are laid out there and you might come across them in your research. I've broken them down into four options. And at the end of this video is a demo where on one dog's paw, I do all four options for you. One, two, three, four. The quick is that part inside the nail that has blood and nerves. So when we accidentally clip into it, it hurts and it bleeds. Most old school diagrams are gonna look like this and there's nothing wrong with that. But that's your standard traditional cut line. You're gonna ask, where can I cut? And most diagrams are gonna show that because you wanna make sure you're in front of the quick and you're not into the quick because that'll make it bleed. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the alternate cut lines. And this diagram, this second nail right here kind of shows that alternate cut line where you're also getting above the quick, all right? So with our traditional cut line, we're looking at most diagrams telling you just stay in front of that quick and make the cut there. Nothing wrong with that, but I would argue that this explanation is a little bit one dimensional and then we need to improve upon it. And that's where people start talking about what they're calling the alternate cut line. Traditional cut line is still in play. So now the nail is gone here and you do your alternate cut above that quick. So you're still outside the quick but you're taking off some of that nail's helmet. Now, I would argue that this explanation is definitely an improvement on this, but we wanna get three-dimensional, which means when you're taking that helmet off the quick, you also wanna get the sides as well as the top. When you expose that quick, you are going to make it kind of scared because it feels real safe when it's got its helmet on and it's gonna keep on growing and overgrowing. But when you take that helmet off the top of the nail, that's what makes it scared, that's what makes it recede. So I told you that we're gonna go over four methods of trimming the nails. So this is gonna be number one. This is gonna be number two. The third one is still using those nail clippers, but we're also going to do a little more three-dimensional and do the sides as well and try to expose that quick even more. The fourth one is going to be using the Dremel, which is your best bet for receding the quicks. Although I do acknowledge that not all dogs tolerate the Dremel, so some people only have the option of using the clippers. All right, so once we know where, where the quick is, and on this one we can see pretty well the bottom of it, we're gonna make our conventional cut. And that's fine, nothing wrong with that. Let's do it again on this one. Good girl. Well, we're gonna improve on it slightly. Good girl. Conventional plus, let's do that alternate cut line. That's our two-dimensional Good girl. And that's an improvement on the original conventional cut. Good girl. Let's improve on that with our three-dimensional on the third nail here. Good girl. You cut the nail to the length you want it, and then you wanna try to take some slivers off on the sides as well, and basically expose that quick as much as you can. You'll have better luck receding the quick, if you expose, take off that helmet and expose the quick without quicking the dog. And this is why I much prefer to use the Dremel, which is gonna be our fourth demo here. Now, the only time I clip before I Dremel is if there's enough material to save me time by clipping some of it. But I clip very conservatively because I rely on the Dremel to take most of that material off. So let's do our three-dimensional with the Dremel. Good girl, Bella. Good girl. Good girl. I know. Oh, I know. Hold on. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Now, I want to point out that I am at the quick here, that middle part that looks like a pencil, that is the quick. A lot of people don't realize that they can get farther into that quick than they think using this Dremel method. So with very light pressure, I'm gonna round that. I don't have to leave it pointy, but you see how I removed most of it by focusing on 
the sides and the top and the sides and the top. And now with very light pressure, I can round it out. I know. And it's obviously sensitive there, but it's not injured. Now that's how we're gonna chase back the quick if we need to. So what we did here, our conventional cut is not really gonna recede the quick. Our conventional plus the alternate cut line has a chance of receding the quick, certainly a better chance than the first one. But if you take that three-dimensional approach, you have a much better chance of receding the quick. I prefer the Dremel for any dog that will tolerate it because you see what an improvement this is on even this. It's that much shorter, that much rounder, that much smoother. And this is definitely going to help you receive the quick. Just for some final clarity, here's a terrible drawing of Bella's paw. We did the traditional cut. We did the traditional cut plus the alternate cut line. We did three dimensional with those clippers and we did three dimensional with the Dremel. So that's just fine. This one is good. This one is better and this one is best. Will any of these methods recede the quick? This one, probably not. This one, maybe. This one, probably. This one, yes. The 3D with the nail clippers will recede the quicks if you are getting close enough to the quicks and exposing that quick enough. And that's challenging. As you do it, you'll get better and better at it. I see a lot of people who post questions and say, I've been clipping these nails so often, every two to three days to try to get them to recede, and it's just not happening. And then they'll show a picture and I can tell that what they're doing is this and sometimes this. And that's where they're getting frustrated because they're not getting into the quick receding effectiveness. Now I have a companion video called how often should you do a dog's nails in order to receive the quick. I highly recommend that you watch that because I explain in that video why the every two to three days is not necessarily a requirement if you are doing it effectively enough. The last thing I wanna add is that you have to have good, sharp clippers that are working. If your clippers are a little janky or a little dull and they are kind of doing more of a crushing rather than a slicing, you've got problems. In order to do this successfully, especially to get close enough to the quick to receive the quick, you've gotta have clippers that are sharp and actually slicing that nail. I'm gonna post two links for you guys. One is my top pick which is the Miller's Forge Red Handle Clippers. Everyone was all a flutter about these online, so I finally tried them. And sure enough, they are the best clippers I've ever tried. And they're only like 11 or 12 bucks on Amazon. So there's a link in the description to that for you guys. And I'll link one more that I like because it was particularly powerful. So you just gotta make sure if, you, if they start getting dull or anything like that, and you're having trouble getting that slicing through, then you need to either get them sharpened or replace them or whatever but you don't wanna be working with shoddy equipment. Guys, if this video was useful to you and you think other people should see it, then go ahead and hit that like button for me and that'll help me to get this information to more people. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll subscribe.